I think it's, um, it's been just over a year since I was here last with a team from YWAM Gold Coast. Um, good to see you. Wow. That's awesome. Um, I was thinking about that. Al gave me a ring probably about a month ago, maybe a little bit more, and said, hey, you know, I'd love for you to come up and actually do a preach for me while I'm on holidays. And I just thought that'd be really fun. And I was just working it out. I'm like, I think it's just been, just been over a year since we had a team here, and it was wonderful for us to be here at that time as well, too, and get to connect with this church. And um, I may have mentioned this last time as well, too, but it was my first time. I actually didn't know this was Alan and Jackie Kirchen's church. So I had one of, um, one of my team members organize the whole outreach, and we unanimously felt like Lismore. We needed to go somewhere in Lismore. And, um, and so I said, hey, why don't you do some praying, do some searching, see if you can get some contacts. And she said, yeah, there's this really cool guy, Al, I've been connecting with. He's a pastor. And I hadn't seen Alan for a solid seven years, six, seven years. And um, we, we rock up over here in the van, and I get out, and there's Alan Kirchin. And I'm like, oh, my gosh. He was one of the guys on my discipleship training school with YWAM that, like, he was literally one of my favorite speakers. And I'm sure he's probably your favorite speaker as well. Um, but it was amazing to see him again and just see what the Lord is actually doing in Lismore and in this church. And it's just been a lot of fun. Um, so with me this morning, as mentioned, this is my beautiful wife, Sheree. And then I have Verity and Eliana with me as well, too. And we are the directors at YWAM Gold Coast. We've been serving with YWAM uh, myself for the last 20 years. And Sheree's been in YWAM for 18 years. And so my accent's from Canada, and Shuri is from the States. And so we met in Australia. So I didn't go back to the States to find a wife. I found her right here in Australia, which is great. And we've been on the Gold Coast ever since, um, just leading the mission there and um, being a part of what the Lord is actually doing and young people and in the Gold Coast. And it is incredible. It is, um, it is such a privilege to be able to um, be a part of what God is doing and to hear his voice, and um, I'm a bit biased towards Youth with a Mission because I love it. God called me into it, but I just love seeing young hearts just revive with Jesus, and uh, we are in such a time right now around the world globally where more than ever before, we need to hear the voice of God and know Jesus, right? In the midst of everything trying to show us who God is and everything's relative and subject to how we feel, it is so important that we hear the voice of God. And so this morning, um, I, I want to bring an encouragement. I, I hopefully, hopefully this will encourage you guys. I was praying and Asking the Lord, what, what could I bring to a rise church, this powerful church that's on fire for Jesus every week? What could I possibly bring to this church to encourage them and hopefully just add fuel to the fire that's already in this place? And, um, and I felt like God gave me a word about praying and intimacy. Um, some really simple things that we have heard about heaps. Um, but sometimes we just lose, um, we just lose how powerful these really simple things are in our day-to-day -day lives. And we can sometimes forget that prayer literally moves the hand of God, but it's about actually, you know, um, getting yourself positioned and being, uh, being a man and a woman of perseverance where we persevere through and we pray for like a week, two weeks, we see nothing and sometimes we give up. But I feel like God really wants to encourage us this morning in like persevering and actually praying and believing and receiving. So um, can I get that first slide up? Is that all right? Is it up ready? Whoever, there we go. So being a praying family, um, how many of you guys would actually say, you know, where I know I can be in God and what Jesus has paid for and where I'm currently living, there's a bit of a gap. Would anybody have an experience like that? Yeah, I've had that experience over and over, and there's still many moments in my life where I, I think about what Jesus has actually paid for. You know, when he said, it is finished, he actually meant it is finished, right? And so where, if we start where he left off, I'm like, I'm definitely falling short in some areas. And I think this is the process when we give our lives to Jesus, that we get to kind of partner with him spend time with him, read the word, worship, pray, and actually get to know how we can become more like him and how we can outwork the plans and the purposes of God in our lives, right? And so this morning, I want to talk about being a praying family. Are you guys okay with that? 
How many, just, just out of curiosity, how many people in here just love prayer? Like, I love prayer. There's a couple hands that went up, right? Um, I would say that I'm starting to love prayer a lot more. And um, I, I think COVID did a number on churches and ministries, and it's been a difficult time. And it's amazing when you get pushed into a corner and you have no other option, you get on your knees. I've got mates back home that aren't even saved. They're not even saved. They don't even know God. And when they've been in a hard situation, it's amazing how they've told me they, they were just on their knees and they began to pray. And I'm like, who are you praying to? You know, it's, it's, it's a really interesting conversation, but it's amazing how when we get pushed into a corner, if, um, if we don't give up, we'll see God move mightily, right? Um, can I get the next slide, please? I want to start in Matthew 6. If you guys got your Bibles, it'd be great to turn there. Matthew 6, and I'm just going to read verses 5 and 6. This is what it says. And when you pray... You shall not be like the hypocrites, for they love to pray standing in the synagogues and on the corners of the streets, that they may be seen by men. As surely I say to you, they have the reward. Verse 6, but you, when you pray, go into your room, and when you have shut your door, pray to your Father who is in, who is in the secret place, and your Father who sees in secret will reward you openly. Now, there is a beautiful picture here where he's saying, this is how we should pray. Right? Like, we can, and I don't think there'd be anybody in this room that would do this, but clearly Jesus was speaking of, you know, the Pharisees that would um, pray these loud, magnificent prayers and for everybody to hear, and they would all say, wow, look how spiritual these guys are. They have a connection to God. Oh my gosh. Well, they got the accolades of man, and that was the reward, right? But we don't want the rewards from man. We want the rewards from heaven, right? And so he says, so I show you a better way. When you, when you're all alone, you go into the room, you shut the door behind, and you hang out with your Father in heaven. And it's in that place where we begin to speak to our Father in heaven, when we begin to petition the Lord with things, when we begin to spend time with him, feeling what the Lord feels, understanding what heaven wants to get us in this moment or situation or season. He says, I will then deliver to you the things that are necessary. But how often, how often and how easy is it for us to just jump into a prayer time or petition the Lord and like, We'll feel like we had some, you know, prayer time, but we leave before we hear anything. We leave the room before we hear or feel what the Lord is saying. And this is a beautiful picture of intimacy right here. Go and close the door. It's just you and the Lord. Just you and the Lord. Just you and the Lord. And I want to speak to the gap that we have between where we are right now and where we know God would like us to be or even where you would love to be yourself. Maybe you'd love to live in greater victory in certain areas. Maybe you'd love to have a deeper connection with God than you do right now. Maybe you would love to see things begin to change in Lismore. Maybe you'd love to see things change in this church. You know, if, if things need to shift and God needs to come in a different way, there's things that only God can do. There's things that only God can do in this partnership with him has always been so. It's been we get filled with the Spirit of God not because we have been great people, not because we've done everything right. No, it's because of Jesus. He paved a way, paid for the penalty of sin, wiped out your sin, washed it away, cleansed you, filled you with his spirit. And he says, now you believe. You believe, right? You believe. And so there's this incredible thing that Jesus calls us to do, and it's to believe. And you'll see this over and over through the Gospels. Don't doubt, only believe. Don't doubt, only believe. Don't doubt, only believe. What's impossible for man is possible with God. So there's this thing when we're looking at things in our lives where we're like, whether it's hab habitual sins or whether it's just things that keep circling around, whether it's curses that have been put on your life or words that have been spoken over you, there's these things that just cycle through over and over and over and we just can't seem to break break free, or we'll have a moment or a season or a time where we feel like something is, something is beginning to shift. We get excited, like something is happening, and then we fall straight back into it again. Or that same thing just comes around again. And I would say to you guys that we need to learn how to pray. 
We need to learn how to believe and we need to learn how to receive. It is such an important tool for us as believers, right? To believe, right? And I, I heard this saying many, many years ago. And when I first heard it, I was a little bit shocked, and, but then I realized that I fit that category. He said this, he goes, you know what? You guys are just a bunch of unbelieving believers. And I heard that and I was like, whoa, what did you call me, right? And it's so true. We are believers in Jesus, but sometimes we don't believe that he can actually do what he says he can do. Or we don't actually believe that we can overcome because our experiences have told us otherwise. And we've got many stories to back that up. We've got, you know, time and time again, years and years and years of experiences that speak to us to just, you know, live blasé for the Lord or, you know, that's just going to be my, my cross to bear, that sin in my life or that thing. When really God is saying, no, partner with heaven, partner with heaven. Partner with God and things begin to change. But don't give up. Don't give up. So prayer, communing with God and developing your relationship with Him. Because prayer really is just talking to God, right? And you can do that. Like it's, it's a really simple thing. It's not, you don't have to be beautiful in your conversation with the Lord. I think it just needs to be authentic, right? And I think this is where we begin to really experience and encounter what God has paid for when we're authentically coming to him, realizing that I don't need to have a four-year Bible degree to understand what God is saying. Those are wonderful things, and if you want to go that route, well, by all means, but it's not going to make you any more loved in the eyes of God. And what's so cool about that is it just means that every person in this room, how young and old you are, we can talk to God and we can begin to develop a really wonderful relationship with the Lord. We can speak with Him and He wants to speak with you. But this is, this is the hard thing right here is, you know, sometimes we find it hard to sit on the couch with the Father, right? We can blast in for prayer and then we can blast out quickly. But I'm going to suggest to you guys that the scripture here, when they're saying, how should we pray? And he's saying, this is how you should pray. Spend some time hanging out with God. Spend some time. It is so simple, but yet it's the missed thing in our Christianity. And sometimes we, we can feel like we've spent a lot of time with God because we've had great fellowship, and great fellowship is biblical, and it's a good thing. We encourage one another in the Lord. So it's, that's a wonderful thing. And sometimes we can feel like we've, we've, we've had good prayer with, with God because we've talked to someone about all the problems that we're facing in life, right? But nothing can replace that time with just you and the Lord, you praying. And sometimes we can feel like our relationship with God is great because we had great fellowship when really all you had was great fellowship. And great fellowship can fill your soul. It can fill your soul. It can make you feel wonderful. I've had many conversations with, with friends and people at church where I, I walk away and I just feel like, wow, that was incredible. God is so close. He's so near. And of course he is, but his desire is for you. And I had this, this really... Um, powerful moment. And it wasn't a rebuke, but it was a reality. Um, I, I listened to this, this guy on, on YouTube. He's got an amazing preaching series. And one morning I, I threw that on and I was just, I was getting revved. I'm like, this is so good. I was being so challenged in my heart. And, um, and on my way to work, I walked to work. It's like a five minute walk. I was like, Lord, it was so good hanging out with you this morning. And this is what I heard the Holy Spirit say. It was good hanging out with you and Dan as well. And I listened to that. I was like, hanging out with me and Dan. So this guy, Dan, that I was listening to, it was this reality that the Lord was okay with me listening to Dan. But what he was trying to show me is, I want time with you. I was hanging out with you and Dan, and that was wonderful. But I want time with you. And this is the getting into the secret. Getting into the secret. It's something that we sing about and we talk about, but we have to do it. If we want to bridge the gap... Bridge the gap between maybe where you are right now and where you would like to be in your spiritual walk, whether it's praying for the sick and seeing healing come, or whether it's just understanding the Word of God, understanding relationship with God, or actually stepping into the assignments of God on your life. This takes time spent with the Lord. We can come up with a lot of great things, 
But you need a God thing in your life that you can put faith in so that when things get hard and tough, and they will, you've got God to lean into. It was a word from God. It wasn't just some good idea that we came up with. Because if it's just a good idea, well, then you can drop it as quickly as you got it. Does that make sense? And so building history with God is so important to you living in victory. Because it's by God. It's not by you. You can't work yourself to victory. It's actually by faith in Jesus that brings you victory. And so praying and believing, praying and believing, praying and believing is so important. And it's so simple, but yet how many of us in this room, you don't have to put up your hand. I'll put up my hand for you, okay? <laughs> how many of us in this room have, uh, have been in a situation where you know, we, we meet with somebody and they're sharing problems. We're like, hey, I'll be praying for your brother. I'll be praying for your sister. I'll, I'll be praying for you. And it's, it's, it's a good thought, but then we actually haven't prayed. Has anybody ever done that before? <laughs> I have done that so many times, and I've been getting way more convicted about this. It's actually a very simple thing to do. We've turned sometimes this idea of praying into just a phrase, something that we think we do, but in fact we're deceiving ourselves because we're not doing it. But it's the thing that will bring you victory. And that's why it's so important. So you get on your knees and you begin to pray and trust the Lord and believe God. Believe God. Believe God. And it's perseverance. Friends, it's actually perseverance. So sometimes, again, I can only speak for myself. There's, there's been moments where I've been... I just need to pray about that, and I pray for a solid five minutes, and there's no breakthrough. And I'm thinking, where in the world is my breakthrough? Does this, does this even work, God? You know, like, your word says it works, and I'm trying to believe it, but it's been five minutes, and there's still nothing. I don't have goosebumps. I didn't see a, I didn't see a rainbow in the sky. I didn't see anything like that. So where is the breakthrough, God? Where is the breakthrough? The breakthrough is in remaining and believing remaining and believing, and then receiving that what you are praying, hopefully it's the will of God, that's a good thing to pray as well, right? Is this the will of God? And if you believe it's the will of God, and that's what you've heard, then you stand and you believe and you pray. You stand, you believe, and you pray. And here's the thing. If you could look into the future a little bit, that, that victory that you're desiring and needing right now, if you could look into the future and you could look back from the future and go, if I would just pray every single day and just trust the Lord for six months, I'd get my breakthrough. Would you do it? Would you do it? Would you pray every day for six months for that breakthrough? If you knew it was going to happen, I would dare say that many of us would, if not all of us. If we knew there was going to be breakthrough, that God was going to come through, that we could trust that the Lord is who he says he is, and I pray every day, you would be on your knees every day, praying and believing and trusting God for breakthrough in that area in your life. Well, friends, your victory is coming. Your victory is coming. But hang in there. Believe God. Trust God. He's not a genie in a bottle. We don't just rub the bottle and he pops out and says three wishes. Thank you, sir. You know, it's, no, we, we have relationship with the Lord Jesus and we believe him because he's God. And what you can't do, he can do. Does that make sense? Be encouraged. Be encouraged to pray. To pray, to go home tonight and to pray. Spend some time with the Lord. And if it's three minutes, then let it be three minutes. Like it's just starting somewhere and realizing that there's no way that I'm going to get the breakthrough that I'm desiring in God without praying and being connected to the Lord. It's just not going to happen. And this is where many of us lose the battle. We lose the battle because our experience is far greater than our experience in prayer. We've got all of the stories, we've got all of the experiences that have fashioned us into who we are today, but I'm saying to you, let his story fashion you. Let his story, what he's done, fashion you. Get on your knees, pray. It's so simple, but it's so hard. Is that a true statement? It's so simple, 
but it's so hard. And so we're waiting for the wand to just come over us and boink. And I would love for that to happen sometimes. Honestly, I would, I would love for that to happen. Lord, can you just fill my bank account? Good Lord, I would love to have a full bank account so that I can just do whatever I want. Did you realize that if he does that kind of stuff for us, he's not being a good father? He will sometimes sovereignly break into your midst because he is God and he is a good dad. But a good dad will always train his kids in the ways of the Lord. And so to learn how to believe and to trust God That makes you a powerful Christian. That means you can minister unlimited because your faith is not in God always sovereignly breaking in. It's actually knowing the ways of God. It's actually knowing that when I pray, God is moving. Yeah, but what are you seeing, brother? Can you see it? Well, I don't live by what I see. I live by faith. So when I pray and I believe, I know God is moving. It's not a question if. No, he is moving. And the timing of the Lord is not up to me. It's up to him. And so we put our timing in the hands of the Lord. We pray, we believe, we trust God, and we begin to experience the breakthrough. And it happens in believing God. He is good. And if he is good, well, then let him be good in every situation. But sometimes his character gets assassinated in our own mind through our experiences and through times of hardship. And he has great compassion upon us. And we should have compassion one to another in our moments of, you know, weakness or hardships. So it's not without compassion and love that the Lord doesn't just give you an answer, but he's teaching you and training you, helping you to understand that he wants you to experience him more than just the moment. Does that make sense? So we're partnering with the Holy Spirit. We're believing. We're receiving. Build history with God. I... I go home to Canada, you know, once every three years. It's going to be six years by the time we get back because of COVID and stuff. But um, we, we share many testimonies of stories of how we've got to go on a missions trip and send people out. And, um, and it's incredible because when you step in in faith, that's where the miracle is, right? The miracle is never before. It's actually in the miracle of you stepping out in faith, God comes through, right? And we get to share these incredible stories of us sending young people to the nations and them preaching the gospel and seeing people get healed and delivered and saved. And and there's people that have come up, you know, in in honesty, just saying, I've I've never seen anybody get healed. And my question to them is, how many people have you prayed for to get healed? And would you know that the overwhelming response is, well, I haven't prayed for anybody to get healed. Well, then you are getting exactly what you've prayed for. See, it takes faith to pray for these things. And sometimes it's just stepping out. Healing is just one area. It could be for salvation. It could be for victory in your life. It could be overcoming a sin issue. Or it could be praying for that daughter or that son or that mom or dad or grandma to receive Jesus. I am a perfect testimony that I was sharing with a gentleman earlier as well too. My parents, I was a full-on drug addict. And um, and my parents were very afraid for my life. And... uh, for the first number of years, they would, um, they would just shred me. They'd be like, you're doing bad stuff. You need to go to church. You're a bad person right now, but you should turn into a good person. And it didn't really do anything for my life. It just led me further away in some ways. But I remember there was a shift, you know, when they stopped harassing me so much. And, um, you know, hindsight, looking back, I've asked many questions to my parents. I said, so what, what actually happened? And they said, Dave, we were afraid for your life. And we just realized that we were carrying a burden that we could not do on our own. Like, I cannot make you become a Christian. I cannot make you get saved. I cannot make you stop doing drugs. But what was impossible for me is possible with God. And they took it to the knees. And they started praying. And they prayed for seven years. Prayed and prayed and prayed. And seen literally nothing change. Nothing in my demeanor, nothing in my words would have said to them, hey, I'm almost there, guys. I'm almost there. I'm almost a Christian. Nothing in what I said would have communicated that to them. But they just kept praying. And then one day, one day. See, the timing of the Lord is so beautiful. Like, when is the day of salvation? Right now. But understand that the human heart is actually complicated. We have free will, and God is setting things up for people to give their lives to Jesus. You just pray. 
You pray that those Christians get in the, into that person's path. And it's amazing. I look back and I see all along the way where God has always been putting these random people into my life, pulling me off on the streets and telling me, hey, do you know Jesus? Let me tell you about Jesus, you know, putting a person in my life to pray for me and to take me under her wing and to show me what God really looks like. Incredible stuff. This is prayer. This is prayer. And all of a sudden, and we just feel like, wow, God finally moved. He's been moving for seven years. Do you get it? He's been moving for seven years. The moment you start opening your mouth, believing and trusting God, He is moving. He is moving. But the issue is that we need to believe. Don't get disheartened when you see nothing. Read the scriptures and see something. See something. See God moving in your midst. See him moving in your life. Can I get the next slide, please? I want to leave a couple of um, prayers with you guys. Because sometimes we don't know what to pray. And I have found that as I'm praying and I'm wanting to build history in connection with the Lord, there's, there's, there's a couple of things that kind of come to mind. And, you know, adoration is one of them, prayers of lament. We all know about those ones. And then I have a couple of the ones that I want to get into. So this first one, prayers of adoration, praising God for who he is. Now, this is so important for your life. I'll, I'll read Psalm 104, verse 1 to 4. It says, Bless the Lord, O my soul, O, o Lord my God. You are very great. You are clothed with splendor and majesty, covering yourself with light as with a garment, stretching out the heavens like a tent. He lays the beams of his chambers on the waters. He makes the clouds his chariot. He rides on the wings of the wind. He makes his messengers winds and his ministers a flaming fire. So when you wake up in the morning and you're just feeling like, I need to... I need a little bit of Jesus in my life. You know, I need something just to lift the mood a little bit. You start praying prayers like this. God, I thank you for who you are. You are Jehovah Jireh. You are the God that provides. You're my strong tower. You're my refuge. You're my king. You are the Lord. Thank you that you're my savior. You begin to pray these things and declare these things. And it's not just some hype, guys. It's actually truth over your soul and over your spirit. Because that's what you need to elevate yourself above your flesh. Because often we wake up in the morning and what are we riding? The flesh express. Tell you, choo-choo, it's, it's going through everybody's house and it's wanting to get you on that train. But you can get off that train, right, by prayers of ador adoration, bringing who God is in your life to Him and praising Him for it. Prayers of lament, taking our fears, doubts, and despair to Him. These are important things for us, right? In our connection to God, he realizes that we are frail in our humanity. We are frail. Without God, we are nothing. Without God, we are nothing, guys. And so he's not just going, guys, just believe me and trust me, and I don't care about anything that's going on in your life. I care what's going on in your life. Now give it to me, for my burden is light and my yoke is easy. See, when you carry your own sickness on yourself, when you carry your own issues just on yourself, you're the one carrying it. You carry that. How are you going to solve that problem? How are you going to heal yourself? How are you going to get free? You give these things to the Lord. So prayers of lament, Psalm 13, 2 to 3. How long must I take counsel in my soul and have sorrow in my heart all the day? How long shall my enemy be exalted over me? Consider and answer me, O Lord my God. Light up my eyes, lest I sleep the sleep of death. David had incredible prayers. Incredible prayers where we see, like, he was someone that was anointed at king, and then for a whole bunch of years, he's running for his life. See, it doesn't make sense. It doesn't make sense, but he had these, this incredible revelation about God, incredible revelation about how God anointed him, and he gave these things to the Lord, but often when you read through the Psalms, he, he starts out with a bunch of lamenting, and then it turns into, but God, but God, you are light, you are power, you are God in my life, you are my Father in heaven, you're the one that created the heavens and the earth. It starts one way and it ends another. 
And this is a great way of connecting with God, giving your issues to the Lord. Because connection is so important in prayer. It's talking to Him, right? Now, I find myself um, taking a lot of this to the Lord. <laughs> and sometimes the balance just needs to be there, okay? Are we just lamenting the whole time? Because if, lament- like, if all you're doing is, is lamenting and bringing your issues to God, we're never moving on from there. See, David might, may have started there, but then he, he ends with this adoration of God. But God, you're amazing. Like this has to be real for us, guys, or we're going to live powerless our whole lives. We will sit on chairs on a Sunday morning and never live the life that God created for us. We'll look at people at the front or hear other stories within our church going, they've got plans and purposes in God, but I've got nothing. Every person in this room has a plan, a purpose, an assignment of God on your life. That's not just a phrase. That's not just cliche. That's actually the truth of God. But you have to step into that. Step into that. Start connecting with God, praying and believing. The next slide, please. So we've got prayers of thanksgiving, thanking God for what he's done. Daniel 2, 20 to 23. I'll read this out for you. Daniel answered and said, Blessed be the name of God forever and ever, to whom belong wisdom and might. He changes times and seasons. He removes kings and sets up kings. He gives wisdom to the wise and knowledge to those who have understanding. He reveals deep and hidden things. He knows what is in the darkness, and the light dwells with him. To you, O God, my Father, I give thanks and praise, for you have given me wisdom and might. And you have now made known to me what we asked of you, for you have made known to us the king's matters. Psalm 100 verse 4 and 5, it talks about us, you know, we we enter his gates with thanksgiving, we enter his courts with praise. Thanksgiving is a powerful weapon for you guys in the area of prayer. Getting your soul in line. Getting your soul in line and realizing that my spirit needs to be above my soul. But we wake up, we're in the soul. Like, how do I feel? I'm not sure how I feel. You know, I don't feel really good right now. So if you're in my way, look out. Tonka truck coming at you, right? And that's us in our soul. Just feeling what we feel and moving with what we move, right? But I'm telling you, it's not just some fairy tale. God can deliver you of that. He can deliver you of that. He can deliver you of living in that place. Is it difficult? Absolutely. Is it hard some mornings? Definitely. But you got to pray. you got to pray. We can't expect that God is going to move mightily in our lives without reading our word, without spending any time with God, without praying and believing, without doing anything, and just expecting that God is sovereignly going to move in our midst. And sometimes He does because He loves you. But a good father will train his kids in the way of the Lord. And I have this example often for my staff. I'm like, could you just imagine if you were a fly on the wall in some person's house? Let's just say some person. And we've seen this whole story unraveling. We've seen it happen. A 25-year-old son or daughter comes out and says, Dad, can you brush my teeth for me? Dad, I don't know what to wear today. Dad, Dad, can you put deodorant on me? Dad, can you... Like all of these things that a 25-year-old should well and truly know how to do, we would all be looking at that story and going, something's going on with the parenting here. Would that be a fair statement? Would we be looking at that going, okay, someone failed to father a child. Like you should be able to dress yourself way before 25. We're talking about a person that does not have complications in the mind and the heart, okay? Perfectly sane person. At 25, you should be living your life as an adult. You should be able to make decisions. You should be able to clothe yourself, brush your own teeth, put deodorant on, take a shower, be clean without your father convincing you to do so. Is that a fair statement? Okay, now I'm going to use that parallel. God the Father wants us to mature. He wants us to grow up. He wants us to grow up. He wants us to begin to connect with Him and to pray and to believe and to trust Him. Because he wants you to live in victory. 
That 25-year-old person that I was just talking about, they will never live in victory and live free and live as an individual can until they learn how to live for themselves. Learn how to wake up in the morning and clothe themselves. Wake up in the morning and clothe yourself in prayer. Wake up in the morning and begin to pray and talk to the Lord. Remember that it's not this mystical thing, guys. It's actually so simple. We just talk to God. We just talk to God. That's it. And we thank the good Lord for all that he's done. I think it's so powerful because in Thanksgiving, it gets your mind off of you and onto God. It's so easy to look at what God hasn't done. But what has he done? Come on, let's move forward. We're not going backwards. What has the Lord done? What can I give him glory for? What can I praise God Almighty for? Even if something small, it begins to give you eyes to see. See, and eyes to see is so important, right? We can, we can go through a whole season of COVID and go, what did God do? Well, I don't know, man. There's just problems over here, problems there, then, then, this and that. And oh, man, my gosh, man, I'm, praise the Lord that it's over. And so what did you learn? What did you see? What did you grow in? What did the Lord say? It's important that we tune in. And if you're not, it doesn't make you a bad person. It just means that you're not going to live in the victory that you can. See, and God is always about wanting to see the transformation. That's why he died. Not so that we go to heaven, but so that heaven could come in the inside of us and start transforming us, and now we bring heaven to earth. So if we're just waiting for God to come someday, you're going to miss out on all the glory. All the glory that he's un unraveling and wanting to reveal to you now. Because right now, you can live powerful as a Christian. Prayer. And this last one here, prayer is a petition, asking God for something. Who's good at that? I'm really good at that. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I'm really good at that. I'm really, really good at asking God for things. And he's cool with that too. I promise you. He's, he's okay with us asking in the will of God. In the will of God. And so sometimes when you're asking for something and it's never happening, maybe ask another question like, God, is this your will for me to be praying that I win the lottery? Right? God, is it your will for me to, you know, have three Lamborghinis sitting out in front of my house? I am not against someone winning the lottery, and I'm not against Lamborghinis. Let me just put that out there. I think it'd be cool to have a Lamborghini. But is it the will of God? Is this really, is this really what I should be praying for right now? Or should I be praying for something a little bit deeper, like, God, would you, would you just fall upon my daughter? Would you fall upon my son? Like I promise you, in, in the last hours, if we knew that Jesus was coming in two hours, you ain't praying for Lamborghini. You ain't praying for a bunch more money. You're praying for what really matters. See, and let God sort of all, all the other stuff, all the peripheral stuff. It, it, it's all just peripheral. It, it doesn't really matter in the end. The cars, the houses, all the money, all that stuff doesn't really matter in the end because we can't take it with us. Is it helpful? Absolutely. If you have it, great. That's amazing. But don't let that become Lord. Don't let that define how successful or unsuccessful you are. Our success is found in the Lord. It's in the Lord. And so we pray, we petition God, Lord Jesus, I just want to be a better person. I want to be a better father. I want to be a better mother. I want to be a better teacher. I want to know God more. And maybe there's some other things that you need to pray for in your own lives and stuff, right? You can petition the Lord, Ephesians 4, 6, be anxious for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be known to God. So he's just okay with that. He's okay with you guys asking him questions. He's okay with you guys asking, Lord, could you send some extra? That would be really cool this week. Rent's coming up and uh, it's just increasing, but my wage isn't increasing. So Lord, how would you do this? Give me ears to hear. Give me eyes to see, a heart that would understand what it is that you're doing and how we can do it. I don't want to lean on my own understanding, but I want to acknowledge the Lord and his ways, and then your paths will be straight, right? It's, it's all about the Lord. It's all about the Lord. We got to pray, guys. We got to pray. We got to pray. It's talking with Jesus. 
talking with Jesus, talking with Jesus, and letting that be the powerful weapon in your family, in your midst, because you can't change the things that you can't change. Pretty profound, right? You can't change the things that you can't change, but God can move mountains. God can move mountains. And if you knew that God was going to I mean, he's moving the whole time, but if he knew something was going to break or change in six months from now, would you pray every day? Faithfully praying, saying, God, change my city. God, would you change my life? God, would you change my son's life? God, would you break in, break the addiction off my life? There's a little thing that I have in the, in the front of my Bible here. And there was a season many years ago when I was struggling and just knowing who I was, I was, I was just, I, w- I always felt in- insecure around people that were um, maybe just further along in the journey, you know? And I felt like comparison, I never felt like I measured up. That was something that traveled with me into my Christianity. Not funny, eh? How we get saved, everything's new, but then yet our mind needs to be renewed and catch up with what's already happened, right? And so I'm struggling with who I am as a son. And so there was a pastor that I seen, he had a bunch of things written in his Bible many years ago, and I'm like, I'm, I'm stealing that. I am absolutely stealing that. This is who I am in Christ. Who I am in Christ. And so every one of these, these little um, sayings or you know, words have got scriptures attached to it. So it's absolute truth. And I remember just on my prayer walks, I would take my Bible out and I'm like, I am loved by God. I am forgiven. I am set free. I am redeemed. I'm God's son. I'm the covenant child today. I'm the head, not the tail. I'm above, not beneath. I can do all things through Christ Jesus who strengthens me. I walk in divine health. I have the mind of Christ. Satan is under my feet. And I'd begin to, like, I would do that one time and I'd be like, all right, that was okay. And then I would do it again, and I'd do it again, I'd do it again, to the point where your spirit man is beginning to receive the truth of God. And it can sound a little bit silly, guys, like, do we really need to, do we really need to, like, you know, just get a bunch of scriptures and read them out in front of the mirror and tell yourself that you're amazing and all this stuff? Guys, yes, you do. Yes, you do, because everything else out there is telling you who you are. Everything else there, like, everything out there, society... It's telling you how you should live your life, how success really looks. We need the Word of God in our lives. And if you want this afterwards, come take a picture of it. Put it in your Bible. Start believing it. Start praying it. Start confessing it over your life. Talking to the Lord about the areas of your life that you just need to see change and break. Does that make sense? All right, our last slide, if I can grab that. Pray your way out. Pray your way in. Has this been a really simple, doable message? It's been so simple, hey? So simple. And as I was praying for you guys this this week, I felt like the Lord said, I want you to sow something into the garden of Arise. And it's this right here. Praying and believing. Praying and believing. This is what I felt like the Lord wanted to sow into this garden right here at, at Arise Church. You can pray your way out of situations, and you can pray your way in. It really is that simple. But you got to have tenacity. you got to persevere. Persevere and persevere. And just remember that we're not, we're not trying in our prayer to change situations. No, in our prayer, we're believing God, and He's changing it. So the change is not on your shoulders. The change has nothing to do with you. It's actually the Spirit of God that changes the heart of a man or a woman. It's the Spirit of God that can bring that person into that person's life where you're like, oh my gosh, I met this person and they just read my mail, they knew everything about me, and I gave my life to Jesus today. Only God can do that. There is just no way that you could fabricate something like that and make it happen in the way that it happens. It's only God. And so we just pray. And we pray, and we pray, and we pray. And if we're struggling to pray, ask God to give you strength. Don't feel like you need to start one hour a day. Start with a couple minutes a day. Start with a minute a day, whatever it takes. But don't let yourself off the hook, okay? Remember that 
If you're a Christian and you really want to live powerful, you will never, ever, 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 ever live powerful for God apart from connection. You won't. So my encouragement is live powerful. You don't have to live in that sin. You don't have to live that way. You don't have to keep watching that stuff. You don't have to keep living with bitterness in your heart or hatred or a distance from God. You don't have to live in that stuff. You can be free, but it's with connection to God, talking to him, believing him, and trusting him, and getting into your word. And if you need to gather around some people, gather some people to pray and to believe and let these things go. Forgive the people that you need to forgive. Just forgive them and trust the Lord. We're not trusting a feeling, guys. We're trusting the Lord. Feelings come and go, and often they lead us astray. So whether we feel free or not has no bearing on whether or not you're free. We trust God. We give it to the Lord. You are free in Jesus' name. Now live free. Your feelings will say lots of things on lots of days and in lots of moments. But we don't trust in our feelings. We trust in the Lord. Is that okay? You guys are okay? Just encouragement for you guys. Just want to sow into this garden. Prayer. Be connected to God. Trust Him. Believe Him. Do not do it on your own. You will struggle. You will struggle. If you feel like you're struggling, give it to the Lord. Give it to the Lord. Give it to the Lord. Is that cool? Why don't we stand? All right, let's just put out our hands. You know, sometimes I do this. It's just a... We're just going to receive from from Dad, our Father in Heaven. We're going to receive from Him. And Lord Jesus, we just want to thank You that You are in this house and You are doing incredible things. You're moving in this city, Father, and we are grateful. We are so grateful. And Lord, I thank You that we're called to see with our hearts, not always just with our eyes. And so I just pray for faith, God. I pray for our faith to be strengthened. Lord, if we are wrestling with family issues in this house, God, I thank you for faith. I thank you for faith, God. Strengthen. Strengthen our faith and our belief and our trust in you. God, if we're holding on to bitterness, if we're holding on to jealousies or unforgiveness, Father, I pray that by your Spirit, you would teach us and you would show us how to let go and be free in God, in Jesus' name. God, I pray that you would teach us You would teach us how to pray. You would teach us how to talk to you every day for this to be a normal thing, not just a Sunday thing or a Bible study thing, but that, Father, you would show us how to sit on the couch with you and have a conversation and to let go of the things that are burdening us. We just thank you, Lord. It's by your Spirit. It's not by might. It's not by power, but it's by your Spirit. And so, God, would you fill us Would you fill us, Holy Spirit, overflowing, fill us, fill us to overflowing, Psalm 23, cup overflowing, God. We just thank you for a move of God in our family lives, church life, work lives, friends lives, God. We ask that you would come and just teach us and show us. God, convict our hearts when we're running astray. We thank you that you're a good father and you want to teach us how to live holy and blameless. You want to teach us how to live powerful for the kingdom of God. And so, Jesus, we ask that you would just come. Would you come show us how to pray? Teach us how to pray the will of God. Help us to be hungry, God. Hungry for the things of God. Hungry for victory. Hungry to learn and grow in our relationship with Jesus. Hungry to see our city transformed into a place that honors God. Thank you, Jesus. Just pray for a gift of faith to fall upon us, Lord. That we would just believe. And we would take the simple idea of prayer into our everyday. Thank you that you walk with us. You never leave us nor forsake us, Lord. You walk with us in the issues of life. You have great compassion for all of us in our situations, Lord. But you give us answers and truth, and you help us to walk through doors. Bless this church, God. Bless Alan and Jackie as they're on holidays, Lord Jesus. Just pray that you would fill them.
God, I I pray that your glory would be felt wherever they're at right now. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. All right, guys, God bless you.